Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. Today, Ian R. Buck and Amy Buck will be sharing their experiences with the Google Trips app. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO22. Uh, so, Mom, I think this is your podcasting debut. Yes. <laughs> uh, you did appear very briefly at the v- beginning of the uh, the copyright episode. Do you remember that? When I went and like asked a bunch of people what they thought of copyright law. Oh, I, right. Yeah. Yes. So your voice is one of the many that appears in the intro for that episode. Okay. Um, but this is the first uh, first proper full episode that you're a part of. The reason that I invited my mom over for this one is because uh, we're each other's favorite traveling buddies, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, A few years ago when we were in Sweden, um, we had this system down where you would find all of the stuff to do, right? Yes. I I brought the Rick Steves, or as Ian calls it, Steve's yeah. book. <laughs> I, I would just ask mom, like, hey, what does Steve say we should do next? <laughs> exactly. So I was old school, had the book. We'd find cool things to do. And then Ian would look on his computer or on his phone as to where the public transportation was to get to where we wanted to go. Yep. And that worked really, really well, especially since, like, um, Rick Steve puts a lot of like detail into the stuff. Like he doesn't just tell you like, here's a cool thing, go and check it out. Right. He gets into depth about like, here's some of the history about it that you might not know just by visiting it, you know? Um, and, and a bunch of really obscure mm-hmm. things like in the old town of Stockholm and, we literally walked by one once and then had to walk back to it because we were like, oh, oh, it's on that corner of that street. And anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So stuff that's like really easy to miss, but he like drew our attention to it. And, and so we were able to find it. Um, so, yeah, I was I was really curious to see how Google Trips would stack up against that kind of experience, you know, where you're like the Rick Steve books are clearly like a very premium, you know, um, self encapsulated guide to mm-hmm. to the city. Whereas like um, Google Trips being something that is distributed digitally is kind of more it, it can like grow and change, you know, as like the city changes kind of thing. Um, so, you know, if there were like new things to go and see in Stockholm now mm. like google trips would have that listed rick steve probably wouldn't unless we like went and bought a new version of his book mm-hmm. um and and obviously like google trips is free um but i was expecting you know that we might miss out on some of those like really detailed things where you know where where it's um one person who's really really knowledgeable on the subject like giving us this kind of insider scoop mm-hmm. um so, so yeah, um, Google Trips. It is an app for trip planning. Um, and one of the reasons that I had even heard of it is, of course, because it's from Google and I'm, like, the biggest Google fan that you'll ever meet. Um, and one of the things that I really like about it is that it, like, integrates really, really well into the rest of the Googleverse. Um, so all of, like, the, the info about, like, specific locations are sourced from Google Maps, um, with some like added detail stuff from Wikipedia, um, so that would be, yeah, kind of the the like th- those those factoids that I was giving you guys as we were like walking around Chicago. Um, those were all I think probably pulled from like the Wikipedia article mm. about that that specific statue or whatever where we were. So, um, so are you gonna tell them? Uh, I'm not gonna tell the punchline, but we were standing on a corner. Which corner? And somebody came up to you. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, so as we're walking around Chicago, for some reason, all of, like, the uh, street hustlers thought that I was, like, a really easy mark. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is about, like, the way that I look, but I, I seem like somebody who's very agreeable, I guess, which isn't a bad thing. Um, but they all came up to me and were, you know, trying to get my attention. And nobody else in the group really no. had this treatment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
And so we're, I probably also just look like a tourist as I'm walking around with my big old DSLR camera. Oh, that's um, true. But, um, I thought maybe it was your age too. That could be, that could be. Yeah. But so we're, so we're walking down, uh, one of the big major streets right next to like Millennium Park, um, in downtown Chicago, we're passing by the art Institute and this one guy like is trying to get my attention. And I just look at him, I look at our group, and I know that, like, we're, we're on our way to another thing. And I'm just like, sorry, man, we're moving on. And he goes, oh, you're a tour guide. <laughs> <laughs> and I, like, I felt so good in that moment because I was like, I mean, not technically, but yeah, for our group, I am the tour guide. <laughs> Because I've been using this app to, like, figure out where we're going to go each day and what we're going to see. And, um... And I tried to get input from other people in the group, but nobody else seemed really interested in like <laughs> in giving me input on what they wanted to go and see. Well, yeah. part of it was we had four people from another country, so they were relying on us That's to, very true. That's to very be true. the tour guides. And I think Dad and I were just more than agreeable. <laughs> yeah, and, and occupied with uh, trying to control the young ones that we have with us. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the, the locations that Google Trips has listed, um, like I said, they're all sourced from Google Maps, and, uh, and it lists, like, reviews for all of those places from Google Maps, you know? So, like, if, if there's a place that has, like, a bunch of Yelp reviews, but, like, no Google Maps reviews, we're kind of out of luck, because mm -hmm. it, they're, they're only getting their data from Google Maps. Mm -hmm. Um... It will show you, like, tickets, reservations, and bookings that are emailed, like, to your Gmail address. Um, that Those will, like, automatically be, get put into the Google Trips app, which is, I think, a really, really nice um, feature. Um, obviously, I wasn't the one who was getting all of the, the bookings and everything this time, so I had to, like, get that information from you and then manually put it into the, uh, the app. Um, but that worked out all right. Um... And then, uh, and then the other cool thing that it does that integrates with other Google stuff is that anything, any of the attractions that you star in the Google Trips map also gets starred on Google Maps. Hmm. Yeah. So, so like, even when I left the Google Trips app to just, like, look at, at sh the Chicago area in general, I could see where all of the things were that I was, right. like, moderately interested in going and seeing. Yep. Um, which can be useful for being like, okay, this neighborhood, this district right here has a ton of stuff. We should go and check that out for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the app has several different sections. Um, like I said, there, it, it'll list reservations that you, um, that you have. Um, and one of the nice things actually that, that, um, makes it kind of a more like open platform is I could have sent the details of those reservations to other people via email, whether they have the Google trips app or not. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously I didn't need to do that for you because you were the one who was like giving me all the information. <laughs> so sending it back to you would have been kind of silly. Um, the next section in the app is the things to do section, um, which is kind of, I, I think it's like the bulk of what the app is intended for. Um, it does pretty well at like surfacing attractions that you might not be able to find just by searching around on Google Maps. Because if you think about like what you would do in Google Maps is you would be like, okay, museums. You'd type in museums and you'd see a list of museums in the Chicago area. And then you would have to like individually take a look at each one and be like, okay, that one looks interesting. That one looks interesting. And then maybe you star them, you know, and, 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 and then you have to like move on to, okay, like, um, are there like cool statues in the area? Like, but okay, statues probably wouldn't have been something that I would have even thought of searching for on Google Maps, but they were all listed there in Google Trips. So I was able to like find them in, in this list as I'm scrolling through and just be like, oh yeah, that one looks cool. Let's like, let's start that and maybe go mm -hmm. and see it if we have time. Um, so I think, I think that that's like the big value in this app is just like surfacing all of this, this stuff that's cool to go and see but you wouldn't be able to really find it if we didn't have this system. Right, because they're all different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If I don't know that there's an aquarium in Chicago, why would I ever think of searching for aquariums in right. Chicago? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it also 
helpfully like kind of will list them by different categories so like top spots you know like really popular stuff um stuff that's nearby stuff that's farther away um on a budget um you, there's there's several other categories but i don't remember what they were um but so if you yeah if you're like particularly interested in in one of those categories then you can focus in on that um mm -hmm. which is nice um each attraction in Google Trips has several things listed. First, it has pictures, because we're a very visual species. Mm -hmm. um, then it has, like, the average rating from Google Maps, you know, on a one to five star scale. It has a little paragraph summary, which was always what I was, like, reading out loud to everybody mm -hmm. whenever mm -hmm. we got to a new statue. And actually, everybody appreciated that. Yeah, yeah, especially the adults, I think. Well, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I did. I tried to put kind of a humorous spin on them, and and but uh, yeah, a lot of the times the kids weren't interested in learning about this this sculptor who made a Lincoln statue or whatever. Yeah. Um, it had uh, a little kind of a, a close in map of where it was, you know, kind of showing. In a like the the window of the map was usually like several blocks wide, um, so. If I if you don't know the area already, you're probably not going to be able to place that very easily. But um, it does have a map there. Um, it'll list business hours, um, which are usually pretty good. We were here over the Fourth of July week, so a lot of times it would have a little note saying like the opening hours for this place may be affected by the holiday, right. but Google Maps doesn't know for sure. Right. Um, phone numbers, phone numbers are listed. That's good. And then a, a few of like the top reviews from Google Maps are also listed. So, I guess from the perspective of like trying to find the like the really knowledgeable insider scoop on these kinds of things, um, that might be where you want to look is in like the top reviews from Google because a lot of times those are locals who have been doing like reviews of a ton of different places and so they can kind of give you like the what's what um in terms of of you know what things to go and see um i didn't really read through them though while we were planning this trip so right may have been a missed opportunity on my part um obviously any of the ones that you star you'll want to be able to find them in like one place so the app has an entire section just for those those starred locations and those are called saved places um, and like I said earlier those also show up on Google Maps um, oh and by the way I, I believe that the reservations also show up on Google Maps as like not as stars but like as uh, a particular like it'll make a list of all the reservations for this trip and it'll like you know make that as a list on on Google Maps so it's nice and color-coded um, day plans all right Day plans was uh, one of the big, big features that we used on this trip um, because day plans are these like user created kind of strings of attractions. Um, and when you're looking at the list of day plans, it'll have a map um, with all of like the different locations on there and and it, they're, they're ordered in whatever sequence the uh, um, the user decided to order them in. Um, now the day plans feature definitely depends on how popular an area is mm -hmm. so like for example this trip this week we're starting in chicago and then we're going to be in milwaukee um chicago has like five day plans listed in there that people have made milwaukee has none mm -hmm. so um if the if you're in an area that doesn't have any you're not out of luck you're not completely out of luck anyway um you can create your own um, and you can either do that like manually by, by finding all the attractions that you want to go and see and then like, you know, creating a, 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 a plan. Um, or you can star a bunch of places and then you can go and have the app just magically create an itinerary for you. And you can tell it, you can, you can get a little bit granular with this. You can tell it like, we're only going to be able to go in the morning or the afternoon or like mm -hmm. all day kind of thing. And it'll hopefully, um, it, it takes into account information about like, how long do people typically stay at a particular attraction? Google actually has a lot of data on that because it, it like uh, people who have opted into um, like sharing their location with Google, it'll know like how long they most people stay at a place. Hmm. Um, and uh, and yeah, so so it can create these itineraries for you um, automatically. Um, 
I didn't have to do that because we found a few good uh, itineraries that other people had created, um, mm -hmm. such as the one w of like, here's a bunch of sculptures to go and see in Chicago because Chicago turns out has like a bunch of uh, yeah. publicly available sculptures out there. Um, I do have a question. Yeah. Okay. So the one place that we went to that was a Vietnam Memorial by the river. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Was that a part of any of that or did we just find that because we went out to lunch yeah no we went out to lunch and then while we were at the panda express i was like oh yeah it's really crowded in here maybe i should look and see if there's any parks nearby to that where we can just sit down and eat and i saw that over there and i thought that it was going to be like part of the river walk you know with all of like oh, the right. um you know little cafes and stuff down there by the river but turns out we were at a memorial yeah um, it was wonderful which was yeah really cool um, so yeah, that that was uh, completely independent of of the app. That was <laughs> that that was because I glanced at Google Maps. Um, speaking of going out to lunch, um, it does have the app has an entire section for food and drink. Um, now, Google Maps, when you're searching for food, tends to favor like the the kind of more upscale, you know, unique, one-of-a-kind um, restaurants. Oh. And with our group with a bunch of kids, I knew that we were going to want to look for chains. Mm -hmm. So I looked for those outside of Google Trips. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. um, I just I just uh, had Google Maps show me where a few, like, cheap restaurants were in the area, and then I gave everybody a couple of options. Um Luckily in Chicago, that was uh, very, very easy because no matter where you are, there's going to be tons and tons of restaurants within like a three block radius mm -hmm. of where you are. Um, but yeah, if you're looking for something, you know, a, a little bit classier, um, Google Trips has you covered there. Um, they, if you're in an area that's, that's you know, a large enough metro area, um, it'll have like kind of an overview of like, what this area is known for from a culinary perspective, you know, so it, it talks about like Chicago's deep dish pizzas and stuff like that. Um, and then it also has a tab of top spots um, to go and check out in uh, in that area. Um, and that's I'm pretty sure that most of that data is from like which ones have the highest reviews on Google Maps. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, getting around was a really, really useful one. Um, this is this is definitely more custom um, where it, it seems like somebody at Google actually like did some research on the metro areas and then like did a little write up on on how getting around works in an area. Um, so like if you if you're going somewhere that has an airport, they will have like detailed instructions on like, so here's how you can get from the airport to different downtown districts in the area. Yeah, and so so they have like custom information on like, here is like the the blue line that goes from uh the the twin cities airport to downtown minneapolis um here is the 54 line that goes to downtown st paul and they actually had a note in there about like you could take the blue line to the green line to get to downtown st paul but that's a time consuming option and i was like yes <laughs> it definitely is mm -hmm. um yeah um, they have general information about um, how public transit works in an area. Um, so they actually had pretty a accurate information about what like the standard price is. Um, for Chicago, what they were talking about is uh, they, they mentioned that it has like one day passes or multi day passes. So I didn't know exactly what our options were when we rolled in, but I knew that those were options, mm -hmm. um, which was good. Um, they talk about uh, how like taxis work. They make a note about whether or not a city has like car sharing service or ride sharing services like Uber or Lyft, um, which is actually kind of important because like uh, I know that a lot of people who went to like South by Southwest, this big convention in Austin, they got there and then they found out that Austin doesn't allow these ride sharing services to operate in the city. And they were like, well, that was plan A. Now I got to figure out something else. Aww. Yeah, so if they had looked it up ahead of time, then they would have known. Mm. Um, it also gives you some notes on like how easy it is to drive around a city um, and how, how easy it is to walk it or bike. Um, so I think, I think they cover pretty much all of like... Did they talk about the 
the bikes that you could rent? Yes. Yeah, they list that. Because um, I can tell you, wow, people used them a lot more in Chicago than they do in the Twin Cities. <laughs> yeah, and I think that that is mostly because bike sharing services are ideal for when you're visiting an area, yeah. you know, when you're a tourist. tourist. Yeah. Um, whereas, like, as a citizen of the Twin Cities, I would hardly ever use their bike sharing service because it's just too expensive to, like, use on a regular basis, yeah. you know? Right. Um, and, like, the the stations are not placed frequently enough for me to use them, like, in my day-to-day, -day, like, I need to get from place A to place B, Um Mm -hmm. And I believe I believe that they actually listed prices for yeah they have prices listed here for the uh, bike sharing service um, in Chicago in Chicago yep yep so that's uh yep good good touches there uh, and then they have a section on need to know stuff so like what are the emergency numbers in an area you know um, when I was in Sweden I was there for four months about two months in I suddenly realized I have no idea what phone number I need to call if I'm having a heart attack or if I like come across somebody else who needs help and I was like yeah I'll be fine <laughs> <laughs> so yeah college students don't don't rely on them for uh, important stuff like that <laughs> yeah. um you know they have information about like how hospitals work um they made a note in the Chicago section about like uh medical needs in the u.s are rather expensive so you should probably go and get a, a good insurance before you visit if you're mm. from out of country you know stuff mm -hmm. like that um they talk about uh popular shopping areas um which of course i wasn't interested in um and they talk <laughs> about uh money so like what currency is used in that in, in that area and um also I, I liked this um this little note that they had they talk about what common tipping practices are Mm -hmm. in an area which is definitely important to know and most tourists don't i would say yeah i kind of realized that yeah when we were oh yeah, yeah when we yeah. were at the restaurant yeah. with the italian family yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and they were trying to cover for us and <laughs> yeah <laughs> yep um and then i thought this one was pretty funny they talk about uh what kind of internet access you can expect to find hmm. in the area yep um now, this, like, need-to-know section is definitely something that only will work if you are in a major metropolitan area, mm -hmm. right? So, right. like, when, uh, last fall, when, uh, when my sisters and I were going down to visit our aunt in the Quad Cities in Iowa, um, all that I was able to do with Google Trips was take a look at some of the attractions around. Um, and to be fair, I did discover like, oh, there's this zoo that I've never been to in all of the years that we've visited down there. Mm -hmm. um, so we went to the zoo because, you know, I was like, I want to go down there. Um, but it didn't have all of this like need to know information. It didn't have information on how to get around um, and, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, though, the Quad Cities doesn't have any of that stuff, you know, in terms of like the getting around, right? They don't have bike sharing. They don't right. have um, a, a very good public transit system, right. um, you know. So, yeah. so I think I think it, it kind of it does seem to scale well with what is actually available in an area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, is this international? The app? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so, like, I could go and look. I think I think it has Stockholm listed here just based on, like, the old emails that I have, even though this trip was from before the app existed, you know? Because I have emails of, like, my plane tickets to Stockholm, it has Stockholm listed as a trip that I took in August of 2014. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, like, if we, if we go in here, um, just to check it out, looks like it has to load things. But, yeah, it has, it has the getting around section. It has need to know. On arrival, here's how you can get to places from the Orlando airport, um, public transit. Yep. Look at all these wonderful Swedish words. Travel passes. Yep. That was good. Um, mm -hmm. Having that seven-day pass was wonderful in, oh, uh, in Stockholm. Um, 
Yeah, quick note about Chicago, by the way. The multi-day passes are actually pretty expensive. I'm pretty sure we did not get our, our money's worth on no, those. No, we didn't. Uh, <laughs> because, especially because... Well, we walked around a lot. Yeah, yeah. But, like, I, I, I did the math afterwards, and I was like, we're going to have to take the train, like, five times a day in order to get our money's worth on this on these multi-day passes. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, well. Mm-hmm. It, 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 I mean, the upside to having a multi-day pass is that we don't have to think twice about taking the train you know we don't have to be like how much money did we put on this card uh you know right yeah um so so you're welcome chicago we gave you a little extra yeah yeah (laughs) plug for the twin cities though i did look at their pricing for multi-day passes uh on the metro transit lines and they're a lot more reasonable it's like it's like yeah it's like four dollars for a 24-hour pass no way yeah yeah, That's for fabulous. real. Six dollars if you want one. No, or, okay. It's, it is a little bit more complicated though, because they have like this all day pass, which goes from whenever you buy it until two a.m. the next day, right? Mm. Um, but then they also have a twenty-four hour pass, which lasts from whenever you buy it until the same hours. day or the same time the next day. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, but yeah. Anyway, that's uh, that's way too specific. <laughs> um. One thing that I, I feel like the Google Trips app can do a lot better at um, is showing us, like, the prices of things. Um, it does have, like, the the section of on a budget, you know, when it's mm-hmm. listing attractions. But, like, unless you are looking specifically in that list, you have no way of knowing how much things are going to cost, you know? Mm-hmm. I happened to know that the Chicago Cultural Center was free because that was mentioned in the paragraph. Right, mm. um, where it said like this is like one of the first um, municipally owned free cultural centers in the country or something like that, and because that was its claim to fame, they mentioned it in the paragraph. Mm-hmm. But other than that, like I had no way of knowing how much tickets were to the history museum or to the um, to the aquarium or whatever, you know. And mm-hmm. and like one of the other adults who was with us at the time. Um, figured out how much the aquarium cost just by looking at their website, right? But I didn't have that information in the app itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, Google, if you're listening, that's one thing that you can definitely try to improve in this app is is get that data somehow. Um, I suppose it might be difficult to keep that kind of data up to date, but mm-hmm. you can find it, figure out a way. You're smart. Um, yeah. What did What did you think of the whole? I mean, obviously, you were just kind of following me around, but did did you think that it worked pretty well? <laughs> well, you know, if if we're comparing our you know trip to Stockholm to this, mm-hmm. um, I, I still think Rick Steves um, definitely had some very unique attractions. I mean, very really granular. Yes, it's yeah. so small. You're, you know, you're walking down a street and you have to find this and find mm-hmm. that and find that and so much history with it and da da da. Um. Uh. So anyway, so I felt like we kind of missed that type of, mm-hmm. you know, really detailed historical kind of stuff. Um, I mean, Chicago's so big. And unfortunately, with the group that we had, it probably wouldn't have been good to try to do that kind of tour right, anyway. That's true. <laughs> with all the 14-year-olds. Right. Very that's antsy. True. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. There was a lot that, you know, we couldn't do because of that. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, but in terms of, I mean, I know the Italian family was more than happy and more than pleased with your tour guide oh, experience, uh, you know, bringing us around and... They were more than happy, you know. They were so nice. They were. <laughs> um, and they really appreciated, you know, you being the leader and, and us just following along. Mm-hmm. So I thought, you know, we left it up to you. It seemed like you planned, you know, pretty quick and easy and asked our input. I mean, we did give you a little bit of input in terms of I think you kind of had a feel that, uh, you know, the museums, the kids probably wouldn't want, right, you know, yeah. or kind of limit that or, um, some people were afraid of heights. So, you know, <laughs> mm. 
Right, yeah, yeah so we didn't try to go in any of the skyscrapers or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. I mean, um... And luckily for us also, Chicago has just, like, tons and tons of stuff that is intended for just people walking up to it and being like, whoa, this is so cool. Yeah. Like, let's, like, it, it's it's not just, like, sculptures, but it's, like, interactive sculptures, you know? Like, the uh, the big old fountain with the faces. I that, know, like, that was know, amazing. That was really cool. I yeah. even asked you, I was like, was this on the tour? Did we just kind of... No, that, Come up how it that was definitely it. intentional. Yeah, I, I knew that that was there. Yeah. I didn't know that it had faces projected on it. That was a surprise. And then the water squirted out of the bowl. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> <laughs> that was very unique. It was, it was amazing. Mm-hmm. So definitely, yeah. Like, I mean, if you're ever coming to Chicago, like for a concert or you know something separate or whatever, you know, maybe you're here to see Hamilton. By the way, that's in town right now. Um, it definitely like add an extra day or two onto your travel plans and just like go around and see some stuff because there's a lot of stuff to see. Yeah, and we hardly really cool. spent any money. I mean, yeah, mm hmm. Yeah, you know, besides food and. Yeah, the necessities. Transportation. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and if you, I mean, um, it's, oh man, I, I do. I do think that it was necessary for us to be able to use the public transit because, like, our, uh, our hostel was, you know, a 40 minute ride away from most of the attractions. But like, if you can, if you can swing it, try out the bike sharing service because like, Mm -hmm. it is a totally bikeable city. And, Mm -hmm. and, um, I mean, it's definitely not like a drivable one in downtown. Mm -hmm. That would be awful. I'm so glad that we didn't try to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, totally agree with you there. Yeah. And we did, we did get our, our steps in. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Almost every single day, uh, I ended with, like, twice as many steps as my typical day. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was, yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Bringing up the average. <laughs> I'm sleeping for, like, nine and a half hours a day and uh, and walking all day and just feeling, like, really satisfied with the whole thing. I like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was good. That was good. Um, and you got some good nighttime go shots at... Uh, from the Lincoln Park beach. Right, for the for the fireworks. Yeah, yep. after the fireworks. Mm-hmm. That was really, really cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think, uh, I mean, Google Trips is a pretty good option if you're just looking for like a free guide for getting around. Mm-hmm. It's, pre- it's pretty darn complete. Um, but if you want to get like, yeah, really detailed, really granular, um, it's, I think it's still necessary to like go and and buy like a guide, a book sure. or something. Yeah, to, you can like, check it out of the library too. Oh yeah, that's, yeah, that's, true. that's usually what um, people do. Or I'm sure that there are like travel blogs out there, um, online, you know, that you can read that have like specific guides on on stuff to do in areas. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, like Google Trips might be a good a good starting point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for listening to this episode of Second Opinion, everybody. Um, I have been Ian R. Buck. You can find me as Ian R. Buck on Twitter. Um, if you want to give us any feedback on this episode, you can find us, uh, the Nexus, at Nexus TV on Twitter, or send us an email at TV at gmail.com. Um, Mom, do you have any like publicly facing uh, presences online that you want to plug? No? Okay. Have a good one, everybody.